Senator Ludlam. Um, thanks, Chair. Um, Mr Scott, you'd be aware that um, the Greens recently supported the Parliament in passing a, uh, an amendment to the ABC's charter, yes. um, partly to defend your online activities. I think mm. this is something that you've advocated for in public in various um, fora. Yeah. Yeah. Can you just tell us what material difference, if any, that will make to the services that AP ABC provide online? Well, well Senator, um, as you'd be aware, you know, from the ABC Charter was, uh, as I understand it, written in 1982, passed in 1983 in a, in a pre-digital world. Um, we always felt that the activities we took back, took on in the online space were valid under the previous charter, but every now and again it would be uh, put to us that it wasn't. I think we now are in the place with the digital media services recognised the way they are in the Charter that clearly all the activity that we've done in recent years is absolutely core and essential to what it means to be a public broadcaster. So that means our host of online services, it means the apps that we uh, have rolled out, it means uh, the service like iView which has proven to be immensely popular are all clearly central to what it now means to be a public broadcaster in a digital era. Um, and this uh, charter resolution uh, makes that absolutely clear and, of course, green lights um, our ability to prioritise and develop um, uh, this online service in this way. Um, and, and so I think it's a good endorsement for the work that we've done. Um, and again, it, it helps us to set our strategic direction around continued investment in uh, online and mobile services. And all the data that we see, Senator, demonstrates enormous growth in um, the desire of our audience to consume our content at a time they want, on a device they want, in a format they want. And particularly when it comes to mobile consumption of our content on uh, mobile phones and uh, tablets, we're seeing extraordinary growth. All right, thanks for that. I might come back to that <clears throat> towards the end if there's time. I want to ask you about another matter that's been raised recently, which you'll no doubt be aware, and another thing that you've, you've uh, made your views known in the past, um, a campaign that may or not eventually emerge from the Victorian right of the Liberal Party to privatise the ABC yeah. and the SBS. Yeah. Do you want to just give us your headline views on that idea? Well, well Senator, I, I noticed that it was uh, an issue that really had a, a, a very brief burst of... Uh, of publicity and that it was immediately ruled out, I think, by the Leader of the Opposition, the Shadow Communications Minister and numbers of others on the front bench. I, I must say, though, Senator, in my uh, time uh, as Managing Director of the ABC, I've identified absolutely no uh, public sentiment uh, for a course for privatising uh, the ABC. Um, as you know, under our charter, we operate in areas uh, of broad appeal and of specialist interests. We have strong accountability to the public. Uh, to Parliament, uh, through the Auditor General and uh, various other um, ideas. But, but I, I must say, though, um, Senator, that, that the kinds of things we do as a public broadcaster uh, are clearly things that the public sector would uh, not, the private sector would not be in a position to uh, provide. It would be highly unlikely that a privatised ABC would be able to make the kind of investment in high quality news and current affairs, high end drama, children's content and providing services to regional and uh, rural areas. Um, uh, a privatised ABC would greatly affect the diversity of content and the investment in content that's available on Australian screens. Uh, we know, because we, um, we surveyed, that um, yeah, up to 90% of the Australian public, nearly 90% of the Australian public believe that the ABC provides a valuable or very valuable service. Uh, around 70% of Australians tune in and listen, watch, log on to our um, services every week. It's, it's viewed globally as an outstandingly successful model of our public broadcasting um, and there's no reason to change any of the fundamentals that have underpinned us now for 80 years. All right, thank you for that. <clears throat> um, I might just correct you there. I believe the opposition communication spokesperson said he thought it was a dumb idea, to paraphrase. Yeah. The leader of the opposition actually said it was a debate worth having, worth entertaining. So. Uh, well, I, I, don't have, I don't have his quote, uh, his quote there, and of course he can speak for himself, but I understand that he, that my understanding was that he immediately dismissed it as an idea. What would actually be the consequence? Um, the ABC doesn't run at a profit, obviously. 
What would actually be the consequence? Are there any like broadcasters anywhere in the world where the private sector has been given the opportunity? Not that I can, not that I can recall, Senator. I mean, there, there are... Um, Look, there are, there are public broadcasters around the world that take um, advertising. Of course, there's the SBS model uh, here. Yeah, but if you look, at the, the, you look at the broadcasters that are like um, the ABC, I suppose, the big national public broadcasters that take advertising, I suppose uh, my study of them uh, has suggested that they fundamentally change the nature of the broadcaster because you're no longer providing content for citizens and for audiences, you're providing content to attract advertisers. It fundamentally changes the nature of the content that you uh, uh, create, the content that you purchase and that you deliver. And, um, and fundamentally, it, um, uh, it dilutes the impact and the quality of the public uh, broadcaster. And that's why I, I feel, and certainly in my uh, time in the role, there's never been any uh, sentiment or desire to put advertising on the ABC as well. Mm. OK, good. I'm glad to hear you reaffirm that. <clears throat> um, do you think, just one last one on this and then I'll leave the topic, that if the, public, if the ABC were to be privatised in whole or in part, that you would end up having to shift your, conf your content emphasis necessarily towards broader mass market appeal and less... Yeah, I, 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 think, I think what you can see, Senator, if you look across the media landscape now, when you're driving a media organisation for profit, you make... Uh, decisions that are in the interests of the shareholder return. Yeah. And uh, when a program that might be of good quality, uh, might be distinctive, isn't, isn't driving the profits, then the consequence of that is the programs uh, disappear. And there, there aren't been recent examples of this. You look at the demise of the Bulletin. You look at the demise of the Sunday program on Channel 9. Uh, you look at the cutting of investment in journalism at newspapers around the um, country. Uh, these, are, these are all examples of the case that when uh, the profit motive is driving the decision making of commercial media entities, as it should, that's their responsibility is to deliver back to their shareholders, then they will make the decisions in terms of the shareholders. Uh, what we do at the ABC is that we make our decisions in terms of citizens, um, our taxpayers, who are the audience that funds us. And so you get a a totally different range of decision making when you've got a commercial uh, media entity or a privatised media entity than you do uh, when you have a public broadcaster that's delivering this content to be of value to the public and to citizens. All right, thanks, Mr Scott. Um, and I guess to be continued, because um, I understand there are a number of coalition MPs who've signed up to a Facebook group proposing to privatise the ABC. So I'm not. I'm not quite as sanguine as, as you appear to be that the idea is necessarily dead and buried, but we'll see. Um, the production studio in Perth, yes, you may sir. not have some of this information to yeah. hand, but could you provide us, an, uh, maybe on notice if you wish, a breakdown on how the ABC Perth TV production facility is being used? Yeah, sure, Senator, uh, we can get something on notice for you on that. Yeah, that'd be appreciated, with particular regard to co-production ventures versus the time that it's rented to external entities. Yep. The time it's standing empty. Sure. I think there's two big stages in there. Yep. Uh, and the time that it's being used purely for in-house ABC. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, we'll get that on notice for you, Senator. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. Um, did the ABC know... this? Is probably just before your time, I guess, when it was constructing those facilities that it had no intention of really continuing their use? Uh, it was opened in 2003, Senator. That was before my time. I, I understand yeah. it was a deal that actually was uh, struck. I think if we go into the, the history of it, I think this is documented with... Uh, and there was a lot of debate, I think, at the time um, as to whether, in fact, a studio should be built or not, and the decision went back and forth a bit. And part of the, the thing that pushed in favour of the decision was a deal with Screen West to make numbers of, uh, uh, to make numbers of productions um, in Western Australia. So it was, a, it was a funding deal that was done together with the state government of Western Australia. Yeah. That, that funding hasn't continued, I think, at the same level, it's uh, fair to say. But they were the factors that gave rise to the decision to build a studio. Yeah. OK. But, but, if, but if I take another example, um, Senator, when we built the new building in Brisbane, we didn't build an equivalent uh, television studio there, yeah. uh, but we are building a television studio as we do our new building in Melbourne. Okay. 
Um, we've discussed RN in the past and the loss yep. of the drama unit and the value of some of Radio National's specialist radio programming, which is also yeah. of a very high standard. Yep. Um, can you tell us, or provide us with an update as to what's happened with the creative audio unit? I believe it was Let me take that on notice. I saw a reference to it the other day, so let me take that on notice and come back to you on that. So you're not sure what's happened yeah, to I, it? Yeah, I believe, I believe it is uh, developing uh, as planned and as announced. I think that was the reference that I saw to it, but I'll have to come back in more detail for you on it. All right. While you're at it then, uh, how much has RN spent on outsourcing programs in the last financial year? I understand it's in the order of about a quarter of a million dollars. Can you confirm for us Out if I have... Outsourcing programs? What do you mean by that exactly? Uh, as opposed to in-house production, how much Radio National spends contracting or subcontracting? Oh, I'll, on, Ra on Radio National again, so no, I'd have to, I'd have to uh, uh, check that. Uh, I mean, if you look at um, public broadcasting around the world, um, on radio, it's often a uh, mixed model. Um, the vast majority of our content is developed in-house, but that's not to say that there aren't talented Australian uh, producers who don't actually want to be staff members for us, but who can develop a season of radio content, and we're happy with that in the mix. I get, and I so get that. Um, we'll, uh, but I can come back to you with the detail on it, Senator. No, I understand. I wasn't necessarily speaking of co-production either. I mean more like buying in things like This American Life that don't have their origins in. So you're talking about This American Life, for example? That's by way of example. Yeah, yeah, well, I must say our, our um, radio model um, on Radio National and News Radio does enable us to buy in some content, I, but I'd be a great defender of the policy that allows This American Life to go to air. It's, it's regarded around the world as one of the finest examples in a genre of uh, factual storytelling. Uh, very popular online as well. I think we have a good audience response to it, and I think it's a pretty reasonable thing to have as part of the uh, part of the mix. There's always been quite a, a, a level of uh, repeats on Radio National. That's been part of the uh, programming, and for us to put in uh, some programs like this American Life in the mix, I'm happy with that. But we'll uh, we'll bring detail of that too. Um, I'm not offering up a critique, by the way, of that particular program. It's just using that of an, exa yeah, as an sure. example. If you can provide us with the proportions that that. Yep. Um, that Aaron spends on that kind of content. I've probably used up my 10 minutes, Chair. Are you... well, thanks, Senator Ludlum, um, because I do want to come to Senator Betts, because I know he is like you. With